Okay, um, we're coming back to Genesis here. I don't really have a plan. I've kind of been reading through these three chapters, 7, 8, and 9, dealing with Noah. It's not super inspiring to me, but... Uh, I mean, the, the, the point that we saw so far is that the Ark is a place of life and nourishment. It's a type of Christ and the church. Uh, and we are on the Ark today. Um, we are on the real Ark. And it is the building work that is the culmination of the line of life. You know, the service to God issues in a work. And that work is a building work. Um, and whatever is remains in whatever uh the the building work is a work of preservation um the ark was built by noah according to the vision related to god's judgment but also related to the preservation of life right and the reason life is going to be preserved is strictly because of the mercy of god because of the covenant the the everlasting covenant uh between the Father and the Son, really, um, the the Son is the heir of all things, and He is going to be born into humanity, and He's going to roll defeat Satan, uh, crush the head of the serpent, right, and restore the way of the tree of life for man, for those who believe, and those who believed, as we saw, walked with God and believed in the. Uh, the promise of the seed of the woman and they believed in the they had an altar where they offered the offerings meaning they knew that death and resurrection and bloodshed was required for them to stand before god and be reconciled to him and that that was the way to approach god and the way back into eden ultimately um and they called on the name of the lord out of their weakness that's the line of life in Genesis 5 that then culminates with Noah, the last of the line, whose name means rest. And he is given to build. He's, he's the only one we see in that whole line that was given a task, a work to accomplish. And that work was related to, it was a shepherding work to shepherd the animals and whoever would come into the ark to preserve them. Now, there's a judgment on all of them, okay? There's the first judgment, which is Adam fell, and so they're cast out of the... They're going to go back to the dust of the ground. Death is there, right? Sin and death have come in. And the earth is cursed for their sake. And Noah was given... Uh, Lamech gave him the name Noah because he would... It means comfort and rest because God through him would give them comfort and rest from the toil because of the cursed ground. The line of life recognizes the judgment we live under and accepts it. Whereas the line of Cain rejected that judgment, really, starting with thinking that their toil of the ground, which was a product of the curse, and the sweat of their brow was an acceptable offering according to the will of God. Cain tried to offer up the fruit of the ground to God. That shows that he did not understand the nature of the situation uh, and rejected the basic premise that things are not the way they're supposed to be. And then when he went out from the presence of God, everything he did was to build and develop things to mitigate the effects of the curse. But the line of life, uh, there's an acknowledgement that, look, we are... We are we suffer in this world because of the sin. That's really important to understand for us too. You know, it's got to do with the acknowledgement of our weakness and the acknowledgement of God's judgment on the flesh. And then there's another judgment, which is man has just become flesh, and I even repented that I made him. Every heart of his, every imagination of his heart is evil continually. That's on everybody. The only way to be found, uh, the only way to find grace in God's eyes, which Noah did, and so did all those in the line of life, is to be justified by faith, to believe God's promise. And then from that kind of walk of faith issues a work, and it's a building work for the preservation of life. 
everything on the Noah's Ark passed through the judgment and remained, right? Well, that's what we are doing in the church. Uh, we are producing the building of God as we walk in faith, um, which is the church. And in the church, the building work is, the pr is preservation. In fact, everything wrought in the church that's of faith, of gold, silver, and precious stones, is something that will survive the fire. See, then the world was judged with water, but now the world's going to be judged with fire. And everything that passes through the fire and remains with us will be the result of this building work with incorruptible materials. Noah built with his hands, he built a wooden ark, uh, which was a picture, but we have the reality, which is Christ in the church, and there is a building work. And that building work can only be produced by those who walk in the line of life. God didn't go to Cain's line and say, build an ark. No. No. He went to Noah, who walked with God, found grace in his eyes, and was a just man who was justified by faith. He had the altar. He called on the name of the Lord in weakness. He had an acknowledgement that they lived in the conditions that they did, you know. His name meant God's going to comfort us concerning the cursed ground. It was cursed for our sake because of our sin. There's an ownership there, you know. We own the fact that we suffer in this life due to sin we don't have an idealistic view that we can fix it and make it all better and see religion does that religion tells you that if you walk right with god you're not going to suffer you know you you can mitigate the if you especially if you build up our systems you can mitigate the suffering you'll be you'll be blessed and you'll be no we the the line of life there comes a basic acceptance. This is, I'm weak, I'm in a fallen world, there's sin, there's consequences, and I live with them. And yet, I have a rest and a comfort because I'm looking forward past the flood, past the judgment, into what remains. And my life is built of things that will remain. Like Jesus said, you know, put your treasures uh, where your heart is, your treasure will be. Where your treasure is, your heart will be. So put, don't, don't build your treasures on the earth where moth and rust will corrupt, but put them in heaven. That's the next age. And Noah, in his building work, was make, was preparing for the next age. And everything he did was about preserve things that would be preserved into the next age and remain. Which, in a sense, were a reward to him. When the flood was passed and he came out on dry ground, the animals coming out and the food coming out, and then the blessed situation he was in was a reward of rest. And God even rolled back the curse, as we'll see, uh, and blessed and restored the dominion over the animals and uh, almost back to some of the things that Eden were prop properties of Eden. Again, it's a type. They landed on the day of resurrection. They're brought into this new era They, as the result of a building work. And the church is being built up to preserve us in life into our next stage. And the fire is going to test all the works. And everything that is not of that building work is going to perish and just be burned off. You know, Noah probably had all kinds of stuff in his house that didn't make it in the ark. He, he was 600 years old when he entered the ark. 600 years is a lot of time to do stuff. How much of it do you think it made it into the ark? Space was a factor, <laughs> right? And he's a builder. So who knows? Maybe he had built things before. Maybe there was, maybe he left a wooden rocking horse that he had made for Tubal Cain as a favor so he could have name of his wife. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, the point is, is that there's all kinds of stuff we do that's not going to make it through. That's just part of our living. So we distinguish between things we do to just kind of survive in this world and the real building work. Um, and whatever remains as we build, see, now once we start walking in faith, 
Wrecking, and, and see, these are this is all this is a, a full spectrum picture of our Christian life of what it means to walk by faith. We call in the name of the Lord in weakness. We have an altar, right, uh, which is Christ Himself, and He's our offering and He's our justification. And we walk with God as His friends as He reveals to us the judgment on this world and yet the blessed state of the saints of the future. And then out of that proceeds. A building work. The walk of faith produces a building work as we become a blessing to others. And that blessing brings them into the ark. It's a shepherding work and a building work. Everything that's in the ark go, passes through the flood. It's in a type, it's incorruptible. It can't, it's not damaged the re, with the rest of the world. Everything that we work in our service in God's building is preserved. And according to 1 Corinthians 3, after the fire tests all the works and those, the worthless things that are burned off, the things that belong to this creation are burned off, whatever is remained, whatever remains, which is wrought of gold, silver, and precious stones and is therefore incorruptible and can't be touched by the fire, is our reward. It's our remaining fruit and our reward. But it's really Christ's reward. And he's sharing it it with us and paul said you know i'm nothing neither is he that plants nor he that builds anything but god is the one that gives the increase however he we each have our reward because we planted and watered and noah see noah doesn't have a right to do anything or a right to inherit anything he is included with those who've been judged in the time of the flood there he's just as judged as everybody else He's under the curse of sin, and he is uh, part of the generation that God said, you know, they're all just flesh. Every imagination of his heart is evil continually. And we'll see God repeats that after the flood, so that we know that those who came out of the boat were also under that same condition. And God said, you know what, after Noah made a burnt offering, God said, I won't curse the earth uh, Again, for man's sake, for his imaginations are evil from youth. Same thing he said in Genesis 6. Well, obviously, he's talking about the next group. So what's different about Noah? Well, he's found grace because he's justified by faith. He's under the judgment, and yet he is preserved from it. Not for his sake, but for the seed's sake. The reason Noah was given to build an ark was to keep the seed alive. And yes, that speaks of the seed of all the animals, right? And that there will be continuation of the human race. But the only reason for that is so that Christ could come, the seed. And that seed is the one that God has the covenant with. The everlasting covenant is established between the Father and the Son. And we are, he establishes, well, it's, it's cut between them and then it's established with his redeemed we are beneficiaries of that covenant but this is a covenant that this is something god swore to do eventually that covenant uh is it was made before the foundation of the world eventually it's confirmed in abraham's time when god puts abraham to sleep and the oven and the torch pass through the pieces and god promises the land to the seed he starts elaborating on that covenant and galatians tells us that the covenant was made not with Abraham's seed as of many, but as of one, which is Christ. Christ is the ultimate seed. And he is the reason why all this is done. He is the reason why the earth is preserved. He is the reason why God had Noah build an ark. Yes, Noah benefited, but it's for Christ's sake. Okay? And they knew that. Noah knew that. The... People in the line of life knew that the only reason they were still alive was because it had something to do with the promise of the seed of the woman and the altar. That, you know, there, there was going to be the shedding of blood for the remission of sin and the seed was going to come from woman, the seed of the woman. And each one that had the seed, had a child, thought that their next uh, person born might be that seed. And Lamech certainly thought it. He had a messianic decree over Noah. He's gonna, he is going to give us rest from the curse 
That, that is a salvific statement. And, of course, Noah, in that sense, is a picture of Christ. Okay? Uh, Christ is the great shepherd who really gets us all on the ark and preserves us. And he is the ark. And he preserves us in himself. And yet he's also a picture of us. We are judged and yet we live. Noah found grace in God's eyes. God had decreed, he repented that he made man a decree to judgment over the whole human race, including Noah. But then Noah found grace in his eyes. See, we have to realize that we are judged before we are justified. Most, that, that's what we're dealing with in this so-called grace community, is that there are a group of people who do not understand that they were judged before they were justified. So therefore, they will not condemn the flesh. They will not condemn themselves with the world. They Paul said we have to judge ourselves lest we be condemned with the world, right? We need to judge ourselves. Uh, and that is to agree with the law's judgment, which is man is, there's nothing good in me. There's none that seeks God. No, not one righteous, not even one, including Noah, including all those great fathers in the line of life. The only thing they had to recommend them was their faith. But yes, out of that faith comes a building work that in, you know, is eventually rewarded, but it's Christ's work. Only Christ can preserve life. Only Christ can dispense his life and regenerate the children of God, build them up in himself uh, to be preserved and become his glorious expression. That's the work of Christ. And yet, he gives us the stewardship of his work. And we have the privilege of proclaiming it. And Noah was a preacher or a proclaimer of righteousness. He preached while he built. In fact, his building was a preaching. And we build by speaking. Uh, Ephesians 4 talks about how the gifts were given. Apostle, prophet, shepherd, evangelist, teacher for the uh, perfecting of the saints unto the work of the ministry, unto the building of the body of Christ up in love. And then it talks about how all these members functioning for the building, all the members are brought into a partaking of the New Testament ministry and a participation in it by speaking the truth to one another in love. If you read Ephesians 4, you see that the way the work is done is through speaking it's the proclamation of these things we know. And in the line of life, in the uh, Gen Genesis 5, it was what we see is a record of their speaking. Where? In the naming of their children, which was prophetic. We saw that. That it was a, they were each naming their son prophetically according to the generation they lived in and what was happening, but also according to God's promise. The names, rec the names had a dual function to describe the generation that they lived in and what was happening on the earth, what they were being saved from, and what God was saving them from, and how and, and the fact that God is the one saving them. Uh, and we saw that, you know, and when you put them all together, it spells out a sentence. Uh, man was appointed, mortal sorrow, the blessed God shall descend, teaching that his death shall bring an end from our lament and our uh it, it'll bring us into rest from a lamentable rest or rest from our lament. That's the names when you just spell them out in a sentence. Um, and that's the only work we see in the line of life versus all Cain's works. All Cain's works are perish, right? Cain's line in Genesis 4 was full of works. But Noah's line or Seth's line was full of life and speaking, and believing, and walking with God. And eventually that does produce a kind of work that's a building work. But even that work is a speaking, because we're told that Noah is a preacher of righteousness, yet we don't see him say anything. What His building work was his speaking, and his speaking was his building. And that is also a type of what we do. And that building work is a shepherding. It shepherds people onto the ark. As we speak of Christ, and we speak of the seed that was promised and what he accomplished, 
and we speak of his blood and the way for sin to be dealt with, men are brought to God and are made a part of this building. They are regenerated and they're even washed and transformed. And that is all God's work. And yet it's our attributed to us as our remaining fruit. He gives us a part in it as a privilege. Jesus is the one who gave his life. All we're doing is speaking about what he did. Now we do suffer for it. There's a fellow partaking of his suffering. Uh, Paul said, I fill up in my body that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ for his body's sake, which is the church, which I became a minister, uh, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to preach this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? He said in Colossians 1, um, there is a suffering because we're persecuted. And so was Noah. So on the one hand, you're suffering because of what you are in the world. And you've judged yourself and you agree with God's judgment and you're living with a sense of futility. Those last hundred years while he was building that ark, his life meant nothing. You know, he knows everything's going to perish. So why build it? Why do anything in a sense? And yet he's singularly focused on the building work of God to bring people and nobody would come, you know, except the eight and, but those eight had to, had to all be involved in the building. Even if they weren't directly using a hammer and nails when the ark was being built, when they were on the boat, they would have had responsibility to nourish the animals. Everything, once you're on the ark, everything is about keeping alive, keep giving life, giving food, nourishment. And Jesus said to us, you know, who is that faithful steward to whom the father will, or the, the master will appoint head of his household, uh, to give meat in season. And he said, blessed is he who he finds doing that when he comes. He'll sit down and gird himself and serve them. And my prayer has always been in this last couple of years, Lord, grant me the mercy to be found giving meat in season. And there's two groups of people. There's people who are offended and not giving out any food and people who are really giving out the food. And they are doing the building work to preserve life. And they're doing an incorruptible work of building uh, to build the ark, um, the church, you know. And But it comes from, you have to accept the judgment. See, the judgment on ourselves is part of the deal. And I said there's this, you know, in the grace community, there's so-called, there's people that do not accept the judgment they're enemies of the cross they don't believe that the flood is for them they believe it's for those people out there and they believe there's something good in them that is the reason why they found grace and get to be on the ark no god condemned all flesh including noah's and so that's why noah's flood is also on the one hand it's the preservation of life uh for the next age which will be rewarded but it's also a picture of baptism peter told us that it's a sign of baptism where we are separate we are reckoned as dead and buried in the tomb the noah that came out on the other side is in type a new noah he lived 600 years before the flood and in genesis 6 it says these are the generations of noah and he had ham shem and japheth right Whenever God says these are the generations of something, it means, okay, now I'm going to show you who this person is. And everybody, you know, Adam gets one. These are the generations of Adam. Then the next one is these are the generations of Noah. But it's interesting because after the flood, it shows up again in Genesis 10. These are the generations of Noah. And Noah begat uh, Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Well, that's interesting. Why does he get two? Well, because he was baptized and died. And the old Noah and his life was left under the water. And the new Noah and his life lands on dry ground on the 17th day of the second month, which is the day Jesus Christ resurrected. Um, it's the new creation. So Noah acknowledged that this was his death. 
He didn't bring his rocking horse and all the different things he made uh, in his life. His 600 years of walking with God, uh, are, his 600 years, I'm sorry, of living in the old creation all came to an end in the ark. And whatever came out of the ark is something new. On a new day, with a new situation, a new group of people, and it's all for Christ. And those are the remaining fruit of Noah. That's the remaining fruit. Um, so we recognize that God has judged everything we do, good and bad. It's all under the water, buried. And the only thing that means anything worthy of being rewarded is the shep is that which is preserved through the building and shepherding work that we do to nourish those on the ark, to shepherd people onto the ark, and to build the ark, which is all our preaching of righteousness. We are preaching the righteous Christ is our righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. What is righteousness? Christ is the righteousness. The seed and the blood. The one who is the heir with whom the covenant was cut and the reason why the human race is even preserved because he is the heir of all things and God is going to bring him forth and he's also the savior. And uh, his blood, which reconciles us to God and it is faith in him that justifies and that's what Noah would have preached. Same gospel. Gospel is not changed. It's just that in each generation, God has moved forward with his plan so that where we stand today is different than when Noah stood. Now we're members of the body of Christ. Now we've received the spirit of the life-giving spirit of Christ, the spirit of Jesus Christ, and been regenerated, made members of the real ark, the real building of God. And we're being built together as the habitation of God in spirit. And this is our vessel to carry us into the next age. And those that we build with today and nourish with life will be with us on the other side. And they are our fruit and our reward. And yet we didn't do anything. All we did was point to Christ and his work. And he is the reality. It's his life that supplies. He's the food. Okay. Yes, Noah became a steward in the ark and so did the other of the eight to feed the animals, but the food is Christ. He's the one that supplies them with the nourishment. He is the nourishment, and he's their righteousness. He's their qualification to be on the ark. He's the only reason they exist. Otherwise, they would have all been destroyed in the flood. Again, God repented that he made man, and the only reason he made an ark was to preserve the seed alive. So that Christ could come. And everything going forward is for Christ's sake. And after Noah's account, uh, there's again two chapters. Genesis chapter 10, chapter 11. Uh, which will be the account of Noah's descendants. And only one line really is the just line. Shem's line. Uh, that God remembers. And and first, they show the works of Ham, the d descendants of Ham and Japheth, um, that it's very much, again, like Genesis 4 and 5. And we'll see their works, and we'll see, you know, Nimrod come out of that, and Canaan, and, you know, all the enemies of God will come out of Ham. Uh, Japheth is kind of ambiguous. He's somewhat on Ham's line, but he also dwells in the tents of Shem. He he has uh, some salvific inheritance uh, aspect to his inheritance. But Shem's line is the focus. And Christ comes out of Shem's line. Shem's line will wind up with Abraham, with whom God again promised. Uh, he established his covenant, the everlasting covenant, that he refers to all through Genesis 7 and 8, the everlasting covenant. It's one covenant with Christ, the heir. And it's for the sake of that covenant that we're alive today. Even the people who aren't being saved, the only reason they live is because of the covenant that God made. To not flood the earth again, and that's for the sake of the seed, uh, and to bring forth Christ. It's the only reason we exist. Everything, everything is Christ, and Christ is everything. 
that's what the new creation is. It's the final, finally God has the people that realize this. Uh, and, you know, the, it's basic that we understand the judgment. The flood judged everything good and bad. It wiped it all away. And God's decree on us is the imagination of our hearts from youth is evil. So we have no trust in our own righteousness. We're still walking on this line of life. We call on the name of the Lord in weakness, aware of our mortality, aware that the only way that we can be justified and stand before him is through the blood and by faith in the seed. And that issues in a walk that produces the building. And we will be rewarded for works. But what kind of works? Building, nourishing, and shepherding work that's not our work, but Christ himself. And what we, our part in it is the preaching of righteousness. We speak to the truth to one another in love. Um, and what truth is that? It's the truth of who Christ is. That's what Noah would have preached. That's what everybody on the line of life preached. They preached Christ, not themselves. Uh, so just, I guess I didn't know what I was going to say, but that's the context. I think we're going to just like, maybe even skip six and seven, seven and eight. Uh, other than we'll land on eight when Noah gets out of the ark. Otherwise I'll get stuck. <laughs> I had no idea what I was going to say. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't done anything on Genesis in a couple days. Is Cause like, I don't know, I don't have anything, but it's like when I pray, Lord, just give me something. Man, the words just come tumbling out. I have I, it's, it's it's amazing, and and it, it, that is the mercy of God. Um, so okay, I, here's this is the next Genesis message. 